What are the best settings for this monitor? By best settings, I mean the settings which worked on my unit according to my preferences and which keep my colorimeter happy. They allow the monitor to come close to the targets which I go for as a reviewer, but individual preferences, individual units will differ. So these are just a suggestion. These are just what I used. So the first thing is the view mode. I would set that to standard. That gives you the full flexibility. If you select something else, such as FPS game, it will change various different settings to different values by default. We will also block off some options. Specifically in manual image adjust, quite a lot of this is greyed out, and that's just because of the preset I've selected. So you can't adjust the blue light filter or the black stabilization feature or response time. So that's an awkward one to have locked off, to be honest. RTS game makes different adjustments. It looks quite over sharp and oversaturated and generally a bit funky. MOBA game other adjustments so you can actually see some of the adjustments it makes and this one actually blocks off the contrast and brightness so you can't even adjust that which is really awkward and then again if you go into manual image adjust a lot of that's blocked off you can adjust the sharpness to get rid of that to try and get rid of that over sharpening but 50 is actually the default and even if you put this all the way down to zero it still looks over sharpened so it has an additional sharpness filter and you can't counteract that by adjusting sharpness so I'm not going to spend more time really going through these uh, because they're just, they just make various different changes and they're largely undesirable changes. They block things off. There's movie, web, text, Mac, and mono. Of course, if you like any of these, feel free to use them, but just be aware that you're really better off using standard in most cases than making manual adjustments if you need to. So yes, mono, that is monochromatic or grayscale. So I stuck with standard. The contrast I left at the default value of 70 brightness I reduced that to 46 which gave me close to 160 nits which I generally target in my reviews that's just what I go for for consistency it suits most of the lighting conditions I use in my reviews when I'm testing the monitors but again that's something you adjust according to your own preferences and your own lighting conditions the other thing I adjusted color temperature I set that to user color and I changed the red channel to 97 green to 93 and blue to 90. This got close to my preferred 6500k white point target. It also gave a nice neutral green channel without unwanted tints. So I'll explain a little bit more in the test settings portion of the written review in the calibration section if you're interested by the way. And the only other thing I changed, so I've changed the brightness, I've changed my color channels, black stabilization, I set that to 30 rather than the default value of 50 and that improved the gamma on my unit. And that is explored in the calibration section, my reasoning behind this. But just to quickly show you, I've got the Legon Black Level test open at the moment. This doesn't look as you'd see it to the eye, but it will give you an idea of the relative change that this setting makes. I've got it set at 30 at the moment, black stabilization. The default of 50. So when you adjust this, if you decrease it, it doesn't upset the contrast. That white square stays the same. The black stays the same. If you increase it, the black also stays the same. And the white stays the same. So you're not affecting the contrast. So this is actually better tuned than some sort of gamma enhancement settings like this. It mainly targets the dark to mid tones or darker to mid tones, not the very darkest tones. So it's really mainly that second row and the third row of Legom which changes with this. And yes, there are some changes to the brighter shades as well, just not white or not very bright shades. So just set this according to your own preferences, but 30 worked well on my unit. It got me closer to my preferred 2.2 gamma curve. 50 gave a gamma that was a bit low in places on my unit, but 30 handily corrected that. Now the response time setting, I go through that in some detail in the written review, but basically advanced will work for most people throughout the variable refresh rate range. So it can be considered a single overdrive mode experience. It doesn't give you extreme overshoot even at the lowest refresh rates that the monitor will support but it does give you some if you don't like overshoot you might want to use standard at times but i would try advanced that's really my main recommendation there under hdr i'm just going to enable that there's really very little that you can change if you enable hdr and things are clearly washed out and i mean really flooded even when you're just on the desktop that's probably because you don't have HDR active in the OSD. So you need to have it active in Setup menu. HDR has to be set to On. And when you do this, things should look better. 
but a lot of these options are going to be greyed out. So you can see you can't change black stabilization anymore. Sharpness is greyed out and a mild sharpness filter is applied. Not too bad, really. You can't change color temperature, so you can't change the color channels. You can't change contrast or brightness. And the view modes are greyed out. They don't exist anymore. So really, there's nothing you can change. You just have the experience that is given to you. The only other thing to be aware of, if you then disable HDR, So I've now got an SDR signal. You might notice that those things are still greyed out. So to have them enabled, you also have to have HDR set to off in the OSD, which is quite an awkward thing. But it does remember the settings that you had under SDR before you have activated HDR in the OSD. So if you've got it set up as you like for SDR and you don't need to change anything, then you can just have HDR set to on, then it will automatically switch when it goes into HDR and back to SDR. Otherwise, you do have to set HDR to off to be able to control everything even when you're in SDR, which is quite awkward. Weird. I don't know why they did it like that, to be honest, but they did. The only other thing to be aware of with respect to the best settings, eco mode, that should be set to standard. If you set this to anything else, it will reduce your power consumption a little bit if you don't change anything else. But just the reason it's doing that is because it's reducing the relative brightness. It won't change your brightness if you've got the monitor set to zero brightness, but anything above that, it will actually reduce the brightness of the monitor. So it will also cap the brightness of the monitor, in other words. Conserve does that even more. And there's an energy saving setting, which you can set to on or off. Sorry, I was fiddling around before. I would actually have this set to off if you want the full brightness of the monitor. This just gives you a slight further reduction on top of the eco mode you might have had selected. So yes, standard is my recommendation and energy saving off. You might also notice there's a little power bar there. It's at 69% at the moment and it does go down a bit with some of these other settings. It also go down if you simply reduce the brightness. So it's really the brightness that's the main thing that affects this. It just gives you an indication of the relative power consumption that your settings have on the monitor. And it is again mainly linked to the brightness.